Jaime Puerto will never forget the last night he spent with his 16-year-old son, Daniel, looking through old photos. The next morning, he found Daniel slumped on his bed. Started yelling at the top of my lungs, Daniel, 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 trying to wake him up. Daniel died after taking half a counterfeit pill containing fentanyl. Puerta believes his son thought he was getting a genuine painkiller through Snapchat. And I was holding his hand when he took his last breath. Horrible. Snapchat knows it has a problem. In September, Jacqueline Beaucher was hired as global head of platform safety. And why do you think they are using Snapchat, your platform, to buy these pills? 90% of 13 to 24-year-olds in this country use Snapchat. We couple that with Snapchat's strong privacy features, and we recognize that bad actors will attempt to abuse our platform to reach this vulnerable audience. That's why we're determined to make Snapchat a hostile environment for drug dealers to operate. Snapchat says it's using new technology to detect and take down drug-related accounts. It's also relying on user reports and third-party intelligence services. And those services are then alerting Snap as to what they uncovered, what they found, so that the company can again take action up front on that content and on those accounts. Is that different than what you were doing, say, a year ago? All of these techniques are evolving and growing. And in some instances, we're making proactive referrals to law enforcement in the hopes of prompting an investigation. When a SNAP user tries to search for a drug-related term, they're now directed to in-app content about the dangers of fentanyl. Have we learned it all? No. In fact, we realize that our work may never be done. For Jaime Puerta, it's not enough. Anytime somebody signs into the SNAP, there should be a warning to advise whoever's opening up their profile for that day, please do not buy pills from our app. Even calling out SNAP's CEO. If I were Evan Spiegel, who has children, I would actually shut down my app until I could come up with a fix. Puerta says Snapchat is too slow to respond to law enforcement requests. Do you still know families who are waiting for answers? Oh, yeah. But Snapchat says it's responding more quickly to valid requests now, reducing the wait time from months to a matter of weeks. Some of the families have said to us that they wish that Snapchat would apologize. Will you apologize? For the families, we're heartbroken. Their pain is unimaginable. Their devastation, incomprehensible. And our hearts go out to them. It's those stories that drive us, drive us to continuously improve. Does that sound like an apology? They're never going to apologize. An apology would be admitting that they are culpable. Snapchat says it has previously apologized to families in person and in writing. And after our interview, they sent NBC News a statement addressing all parents who have lost children, which reads in part, we are deeply sorry for your loss and know we can't imagine the immense grief you have experienced. Snapchat also says new parental tools will be out in the coming months. The tools will offer parents insight into the friends that their teens are connecting with on Snapchat without encroaching on the privacy of our younger users. Does that mean that parents would be able to see who their children are talking with, but not what they're saying? In a word, yes. Until then, Jaime Puerta wants parents to hear his alarm. I am screaming to the top of my lungs for parents to listen to me that they need to monitor what their children are doing on these apps. Toward the end of our interview, he was overcome with emotion. It's just so sad that this happens on a daily basis. Children dying in the United States of America. It's, it angers me. It angers me that they're getting away with this. Jaime Puerta heads a family group called Void. They are planning a protest, by the way, in front of Snapchat headquarters later this month. Some other parents are working with Snapchat to try and help the app improve, guys.
I mean, just to wow. see his grief, and he's saying, I'm, he's telling parents, listen to me, listen to me. I hope people will listen. You know, yeah. we focus a lot on Snapchat here. That's obviously um, where Jaime Puerta lost his son, but it's, it happens on other sites as well. Yeah, that's right, Savannah. So drug dealers typically use multiple social media platforms to try and reach the biggest audience they can. Bocher told me that those dealers often will use other social media platforms to target young people, basically advertising, and then telling them to use their Snapchat handle to connect with them uh, and then make the sale after that. Kate, thank you again. Always staying mm -hmm. on this story. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn more about it and other tools that are being rolled out to make Snapchat safer for young users, we've got that information on our website, today.com. But we were just talking. I mean, you got to talk yeah. to your kids. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to yeah. your children. You know, my little guy is 12, and I've yeah, had the too. conversation. Because yeah. even if you, you say, well, my kid doesn't have it, their friends have it. Sure. Yeah. That's oh, just the reality of it. Yeah, but it's yeah. everywhere, yeah. so you have to talk to your But well, back in the day, if a kid was out on the block, like when we were growing up, you know, if involved maybe in a shady deal or buying pot or whatever, you could see them in the neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, get in the house, get in the house. Yeah. But now on the phone, they're on the block yeah. in a different way. Yeah. That's why you got to grab that device and know where they are. You're right. It's good. All right. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.